At CES, we saw some fantastic products from AMD, including the Ryzen AI Max Plus. These were demonstrated in a number of forms, including the HP Z2 Mini G1A, which unfortunately is coming soon, and that means I can't buy it right now. As I'm the sort of chap that doesn't like to wait, I bought something completely different instead. I bought this motherboard and this memory, and while they cost me a fair amount of money in terms of British pounds, the good news is it would have cost me a lot more if I bought them in dollars. The AMD processors under discussion fall into two broad groups. The Ryzen 200 and Ryzen AI 300 series both look like regular laptop chips, while the Ryzen AI Max and AI Max Pro look much more like desktop chips crammed into a laptop package. And we can make better sense of this when we look at the spec tables. Ryzen 200 and Ryzen Pro 200 are Zen 4 technology and have 4, 6 or 8 cores. The graphics range from Radeon 740M up to Radeon 780M, in other words basic laptop stuff, and the TDP is very low, topping out at 54 watts. You will note that most of these processors have a basic NPU with 16 tops. Ryzen AI 300 and AI Pro 300 are Zen 5 technology. We have either 6 or 8 cores, and the graphics again are Radeon 840M and 860M, and the power is the same at 54 watts. And then we come to Ryzen AI Max and AI Max Pro, which are enormous APUs. We have 8, 12 or 16 cores, our Zen 5 technology, and clock speeds that top out around 5 GHz. The graphics range from Radeon 8040S with 16 CUs, up to Radeon 8060S with 40 CUs, the frequency of the graphics close to 3 GHz, and the power goes up to 120 watts, and you have an NPU rated at 50 tops. The specification of the AMD Ryzen AI Max looks absolutely fascinating, and I hope you can see why this chip is the one that grabbed my attention at CES. I wanted to take a closer look at the HP Z2 Mini G1A, but was unable to find out much of any use. This tiny PC is powered by an external power supply, and the interior is dominated by the APU. And that's about all we know. Price? Not a clue. It's a similar story with the HP ZBook Ultra G1A, which is a 14-inch mobile workstation. As we can see from the render, we've got two fans drawing in cooling air, and that huge APU dominates the rest of the chassis. And that's all we know. Where else might I get my hands on a Ryzen AI Max or Max Plus? How about framework? Yup, those modular laptop people have come up with a desktop model. And there are three versions. Max 385 has 32GB of RAM, Max Plus 395 has 64GB, and the top tier is Max Plus 395 with 128GB. The memory is soldered and cannot be changed once you make your purchase, so you have to commit up front. Alternatively, you can buy just the motherboard out of the system. Mini ITX in form factor, 800 for the entry level version, 1300 for the mid tier, 1700 for the top model. Alternatively, how about this, the Ace Magic F3A Mini PC, powered by the Ryzen AI 9 HX370. The HX370 has 12 cores and 24 threads, but 4 of the cores are Zen 5, and 8 of the cores are Zen 5C. The graphics are Radeon 890M, RDNA 3.5, and you can install up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 SODIMs. To recap, I'm interested in the HP Z2 Mini G1A, but I have no idea about the price or when I might be able to get my hands on one. I'm very interested in the framework desktop, despite the high price, but cannot get one until Q3. And I'm sort of interested in the Ace Magic F3A Mini PC, which is clearly much cheaper than the other two, but it uses older technology. And there's another point. 
Look at all three of these systems and none of them support external graphics. With 20 years of PC manufacturing experience, CyberPower PC are the best in the business. With the largest range of parts available in the UK, our team of experienced builders will expertly build and test each system to be delivered to you the very next day. Check out cyberpowersystem.co.uk. By contrast, the Minis Forum BD795i SE motherboard does support external graphics. The processor is somewhat older technology, but we have support for DDR5 SODIMS memory and a proper graphics card. So what exactly have I bought? I've got a Mini ITX motherboard, which comes with a Ryzen 9 7940 HX processor. That's a Dragon Range Zen 4 processor, 16 cores, 32 threads, boosts up to 5.2 GHz. Default TDP is 55 watts, but you can push it to 75 watts. And the graphics are AMD Radeon 610M with a mere two graphics cores and a frequency of 2.2 GHz. So the graphics are not that impressive. Let's take a look at what I've bought and we can decide, has Leo made a wise move or a really dumb decision? Wi-Fi antennae, rear I.O. shield, brackets to do with mounting a cooling fan, and the motherboard itself. So there we have it, mini ITX motherboard. You can see we have a heatsink installed. I understand it has laptop style thermal pads under there, so I'm not gonna put it off right now because I want to run the motherboard before I have a look at the processor itself. Flash forward in time, and this is what the SOC looks like. And no, I cannot see any markings on the chips whatsoever. We have power connections for regular ATX power supply, including EPS. We have two M.2 slots, SODIMS, graphics card, rear I.O., basic audio, Ethernet, two USB 2s, two USB 3s, one type C, and some graphics outputs. Connect the power. Memory, as you can see, it's by Crucial, SODIMS, DDR5 5600, 64 gigabytes, that's two by 32 gig. This is a kit that was recommended by Serve the Home in a feature they did on mini PCs such as this. And we can see from this graphic that these brackets do indeed install on the heatsink. And then I should be able to install this fan on top of the whole shooting match. And after that, it'll be time for a graphics card. My PC's up and running and I have a few things to report. It's really quiet, as I'd expect. The M.2 doesn't have a heatsink. Obviously I could have installed an M.2 with a heatsink, but the motherboard doesn't have any. I could add this 10 pound accessory quite easily if I wanted to. My DDR5 5600 memory is running at 5200. But when I look at the packaging, I see the maximum rated speed for memory is indeed DDR5 5200. So my 5600 memory is never gonna run at full speed. The Minis Forum comes without Wi-Fi, although you get an accessory pack to allow you to install Wi-Fi. Sadly, the manual is utterly hopeless and gives you no assistance in this regard. So let me help you out. You buy an M.2 Wi-Fi card for about £20, it plugs into this slot here, and then you cobble together the accessory kit to give you the terminals for the Wi-Fi antennae. This took me about 20 minutes of figuring out, and I wish to goodness Minis Forum had included this feature as standard. I think the smart move now is to run a couple of quick benchmarks. I'll run Cinebench. I hope the processor's good and I'll run for a laugh 3D mark. I expect the graphics are terrible. And then we'll look at some numbers. We have a perfectly decent Cinebench R23 score, but then this is a Ryzen 9 Zen 4 processor and we have an absolutely horrible Firestrike score. And now it's time to plug in a graphics card and see whether we can transform this mini system into a proper gaming PC.
you may recall I did a video about buying this graphics card and the fact of the matter is this is the first time I've actually installed it in a PC. I ran Firestrike on the 610M integrated graphics because they are so weedy and pathetic they can't run anything much stronger than that. So let's start with a run of Firestrike and then I think a quick look at a game. The graphics score with the integrated graphics 2398. Here we have 56,961. Hmm, <laughs> that's quite an improvement. Far Cry 6 at 1080p, Ultra Preset, 171 FPS on average and over 110 FPS, 1% lows. I'm happy, it's a gaming system. The integrated graphics on the other hand, not a lot of good for gaming. I can see why people have bought this motherboard to run AI large language models on a little system. Uh, it'll draw very little power and it's an incredibly compact way of going about things. The processor, I'm impressed by. The graphics, not so much. And the I.O. panel, actually that's a bit of a shocker. There's no doubt in my mind this setup has some points of interest, but my question to you, is this purchase a wise move on my part, or was it absolutely stupid? Remember to check us out on kitguru.net, and we're also on TikTok.